Today, I want to share a reflection on Paul's letter to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 to 27. And I read. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foot Hold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us don't know the cost of holding on to bitterness. You may think that if your grudge is justified, then I have the right to nurture it. Harboring anger is an understandable reaction to life's hurts and offenses. Yet resentment takes a horrible toll on our relationship. And even our health, it affects our fellowship with God. No wonder the Bible instructs us to deal with it quickly. In James chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. James chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. And it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anger is an extremely powerful emotion. It can destroy lives, tear relationships apart, and even ruin a believer's witness. The Apostle Paul understood the negative potential of resentment and he offered this advice on how to deal with it in verse 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32. And he says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger brawling and slander along with every form of malice be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in christ god forgave you hallelujah 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 paul's recommendation in this passage may seem only heuristic and impractical but unless we apply this advice, we could easily face the devastating consequences of uncontrolled anger. For example, our anger can shut down communication with others. It can also lead to a silent but very damaging type of resentment. One of the most harmful consequences of uncontrolled anger is depression. It can lead to unresolved conflict, which can have effect on a person's mental health. But we have a choice here, my brothers and sisters. We can let our anger control us and suffer the consequences. Or we can release the emotion by forgiving those we feel have hurt us. The best thing is to bring them before the Lord. Trust that he will empower you to overcome it. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 and 32, and I read it again, says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. To ourselves, anger breaks our fellowship with God. We can be at peace with the Lord while we are angry with another individual. The truth is that people suffer the consequences of anger. For example, marriage will not thrive if one or both spouses become angry and refuse to address the problem. Anger makes people develop a critical spirit. They are always right. They see you as a problem. 
it makes them better and judgmental to justify their negative feelings. This passage says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. We are to be angry and sin not. In other words, don't give in to rage and resentment towards another person. Don't allow the enemy to take advantage of you. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. God does not want us to go to sleep at night without dealing with the hostility we felt that day. Do not give the devil an opportunity. My brothers and sisters, if you are struggling with anger, I will encourage you today to ask God now to help you. You cannot do it alone. Let God help you. Open up to him. Talk to him. And he will give you the grace to overcome it. Be encouraged. And God bless you. Bye.